Based on a principle used back in the 19th century in the Hoffman voltameter, which in its original form has been used by chemistry teachers for many years, about nine months ago I published a project for the development of an electrolytic oxygen generator for fueling a small torch. The amount of comments and questions was so great that I decided to apply the clever suggestions made by my kind subscribers and published a new video including the possibility of modifying the generator in order to expand its usability. The result has been the creation of this new drawing in which I intend to show the combination of several elements with the modified electrolytic generator. Of course, the generator has to produce both gases, both hydrogen and oxygen since oxygen cannot be extracted from ordinary water without releasing the hydrogen as well. Since both gases are highly explosive, they are to be handled through different pipes. Just as in the Hoffman device, the buoyancy of the gases is used to make them flow separately in two separate pipes made of PVC plastic, thus preventing the gases from mixing. Since the main focus has been on oxygen, hydrogen is simply allowed to escape into the atmosphere through the long vertical pipe to keep it from mixing with the oxygen also being produced. This is not difficult since hydrogen is the lightest element. It quickly floats and moves upwards being able to combine with atmospheric oxygen wherever it does not pose any danger. According to the suggestions regarding improving the purity of the oxygen produced using distilled water, I am suggesting to use a solar steel that can be manufactured in the right size to supply the water needed for the oxygen generator. The solar steel is also a very old invention based on the evaporation of water in a closed container and condensing again, leaving behind any chemical substance that could pollute the water. In this video, which is intended to stimulate the creativity of each person, sizes and amounts are not specified, since they are part of the experimentation carried out to achieve maximum efficiency with lower energy consumption. It occurs to me that the first changes should be made to the generator itself. In response to some of the suggestions, the generator would have two cells, one for producing oxygen and one for producing hydrogen. This would minimize the possibility of mixing both gases. Then, as seen in the central part of the generator, I have added a float chamber to increase the pressure exerted on the gases so that they come out with greater force. I have also added an upward extension to each of the cells marked with the letter D so that the water inside takes the level of the float chamber and the cells are always full. The pipes added as extensions are long enough so the water does not peel over the top of the pipe and only the gas comes out. Also, the stainless steel screws have been replaced by laminated plates of the same material to increase the contact surface with the water, achieving greater gas production. The float chamber is fed with distilled water coming from a solar steel made of a transparent box which, like a greenhouse, gathers heat from the sun and evaporates tap water contained in a small tray which is kept full by a float connected to the drinking water supply. This water condenses on the transparent walls of the device and drops into small canoes formed by PVC pipes cutting halves. Attached to the canoes are spill ports marked with the letter C to prevent the canoes from overflowing when the need for distilled water is too low. Instead, the excess distilled water spills outside the still. The last modification was made in response to some comments about the possible high consumption of electricity if operated for long periods. This modification includes 
an array of solar panels which provide enough energy for the generator cells to work. Of course, for use at night, rechargeable batteries and or a direct current source connected to the local power line can be used. This saves energy, at least during the daytime. Of course, each component has to be adapted in terms of their size and capacity according to the other components of the system. I'll be looking forward for your input regarding possible improvements and cost reductions. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Ciao Tarim.